Welcome to Mindanao. I'm actually in Kulas's house becoming Filipino and we're starting a road trip tomorrow and I'm pretty excited. I am making this video to do a few things, to update you on my current health, to talk a little bit about my travel philosophy and also talk about my video visiting Apple Fangod that I posted three days ago that is now currently trending in the Philippines and worldwide. I'm extremely honored to have all you new subscribers and viewers on my channel. I'm also honored to share an amazing person, Apple Van Odd, and an amazing place, Kalinga in Northern Philippines, with the rest of the world and the people who haven't seen it before. I had a life-changing experience up there with her and, and I'm so happy that the world can see what the Philippines has to offer. With this new reach the video has, I've been getting a lot of comments uh, about what I went through there with Apple Van Gogh. And one of them in particular is the risk I took when I did get a tattoo up there, when there was extremely little sanitation. I wanna tell you my health, two and a half weeks later, is perfectly fine, and the video today is about this. Is it dangerous? Do you risk to get an infection, a terrible disease, by going to these traditional tattoo artists and getting a tattoo? Let's rewind back seven years. I was in Bangkok and I was traveling two hours north to go to a place called Wat Bang Pra, which is a monastery that's home to Luang Pinun, who is a very traditional tattoo artist there as well. He specializes in sakyats, which is tapping designs. And the story is the ink they use has snake venom, the fluid of dead bodies, herbs and spices, and every monk has their own recipe to bless you and imbue you with traditional spells. Before I was gonna go, I was like this. This sounds amazing, but am I gonna get sick if I go? I don't know what the sanitation is like. I don't know anything about it. All I know is it's an experience that I wanna go check out. So I started to do a little bit more research. And with Luang Pinun and also Apple Van Odd, the process is a little bit similar. Luang Pinun can use a piece of bamboo, but he also uses a big long metal stick. Apple Wang Odd uses a thorn of a citrus tree. Both very sharp objects that are tapped repeatedly over and over and over and over into your skin. When I was studying Sakyan tattoos and the risk of tattooing in general, I learned something that surprised me, but also was very, very important in understanding the risk behind traditional tattoos. And it was this. There is a big difference between the two styles, modern and traditional. In a modern tattoo gun or in a syringe, there is something called a reservoir. So if you think about a syringe you see at the hospital that puts things in your blood or takes out your blood, there is a hollow tube. If you think of a tattoo gun, if you don't already have a tattoo, a tattoo gun is a bundle of needles. It can be three, six, nine, 12, 15, whatever. And in between those needles, there is a very small area as well. Both of those are called reservoirs. And since red blood cells, bacteria, and viruses are all very, very small. Lots of those can stay in the reservoir in the needle between users. And that allows a larger volume of blood to be passed from person to person, user to user, recipient to recipient. And that leads to a much greater chance of getting HIV, AIDS, or whatever else it be. If we go back to traditional tattooing, both circumstances that I was in, it is a sharp piece of wood or metal and there is nowhere for the blood to enter and stay. Therefore, even if someone before you was infected, which is a low risk to begin with, there is a very low amount, a very low volume of blood transferred from that person to the next person, drastically reducing the risk of getting these blood-borne infections. This does not, however, mean there is no risk. There is definitely a risk, and no one's really quite studied it before. The ink isn't changed and only sometimes are these needles wiped down. What I'm saying here is it's not exactly fair to compare the risk level from modern tattooing and drug using to traditional tattooing because it is, we're not talking about the same volumes of blood here. One single disease cell or one single bacterial cell or one single virus doesn't cause an infection. It has to be a dose of several. Just like one cold germ doesn't give you a cold, there has to be a certain threshold of the disease, the infectious agent to be able to infect you, and that potential is much, much, much smaller in a traditional tattoo. And that leads to an interesting question. Knowing the risk is lower, but knowing there's still a risk, should you do it? And that comes down to personal opinion and your personal acceptable risk level. Here on my channel, we've done some pretty crazy things. We've put frog venom into our skin for combo. 
no. We've gone to Exploding Hammer Festivals. We slept on the Great Wall of China. And these experiences can seem extremely risky. And they're, they are, they can be risky. But also, like a lot of things in life, if you break them down and you really study what the risks are and you prepare yourself accordingly, you can, you can dismantle a lot of the danger in these experiences. And for myself, I don't see these as risks, I see them as calculated risks. I wouldn't do anything, though sometimes it might seem that this isn't the case. I wouldn't do anything that I felt was a real risk to my life. I don't want to leave this world early. I would like to stay here, show you guys amazing experiences, hopefully change some lives and help you guys be more fearless and jump into new experiences and get uncomfortable. That's what I feel like I'm on the planet for. And I would be very disappointed in myself if I did something stupid and something bad happened. With the Van Ott experience and also the Sakyant experience, it was a calculated risk. I went online, I studied, I learned more, and while there was a small risk, I, it was an acceptable risk for me, and I jumped in completely, and I had two absolutely incredible experiences. If I was gonna tell you what I thought the real risk was when you go do these tattoo experiences, it would be this, the tattoo getting infected after, particularly by something nasty like staph. And you can see in this clip, when I was in Kalinga, it can really, it can really do some damage. I would recommend bringing some kind of topical antiseptic, maybe something like polysporin. I would recommend covering it up with oil and keeping it moisturized, keeping a very close eye on it and keeping it disinfected all of the time because I think the real risk out there is getting something terrible on your skin that makes you go to the hospital because again, the sanitation levels aren't particularly fantastic. And if you're traveling, you're gonna be dirty, you're gonna be sweaty, you're not gonna be able to stay as clean as maybe you'd like to and that is something you really, 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 really need to think about. So I hope this video cracked a little bit of light on getting these traditional tattoos. I hope you learned something and I hope you don't take my word for it. Understand what I said and then go online, do your own research and then think about whether it's right for you if you're planning on going. And like I said, if you just wanna go take some photos and support these amazing people doing these amazing designs in a traditional way, that is a beautiful experience as well and there's no shame or harm in doing that learn a bit, and then make the choice. If you've just stumbled across Fearless and Far with the Wang Odd video and you're here watching this video, I wanna say hello, welcome, and if you wanna see more about these crazy experiences that I do, especially more in the Philippines coming up, you can subscribe, and there'll be a lot of really interesting things. If you haven't seen the Wang Odd video already, it's gone a bit viral because she did, she's, you'll see, she's mischievous and hilarious. The video is right here. And also, if you're interested in these behind the scenes stories, the, the juicy details, and also how you can fight your fears and become your best self. I have a Patreon community where we go really deep into the travel philosophy and also in becoming a rock star, the superhero version of yourself. Experience over possessions, and I'm excited to share more of the Philippines with you guys. Peace.